Hey, I'm Zambricky. This is Austin. And I'm Zhang from Magic Giant. And you're watching Canadian Beats. So how did you get on the build at Way Home? Like what made you want to play this festival? It was like a little bird came down. We actually were in Canada. We recorded part of our record in Canada. Oh yeah? Last yeah. year, outside of Toronto on a farm. We're actually staying on the farm tonight. Oh, nice. So we, we know Canada people. Yeah? Yeah, we're hip to the Canada scene. What about that He's bird? Gonna play, be yeah, we played a... Uh, trying to get his Canadian citizenship. <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah. We played Silver Dollar Room uh, originally Toronto. in Toronto, and then and maybe I don't know, maybe they were there and saw that yeah. early show. And then we played Garrison. Maybe they were there. We had, they could have been there. They we played in London. Uh, they could have been, been in London. Yeah. Who knows? You know, the the festival people are everywhere. Exactly. Well, that's very good. Yeah. Um, when you found out that you were playing the same bill as Imagine Dragons and other like huge artists like that, how did like what was your reaction? Like, were you excited? <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Uh, you know, because our records, our records, been out for like two months, and you know, Imagine Drag Dragons record yes, uh, has been out for. I mean, they've been around for longer, so they were they weren't necessarily a direct influence on our music, but we were inspired by like their yeah, power and, and show and, and everything. About yeah, it. totally. That's awesome. Your performance today was amazing. Let me just say, I did. I was there, front and center. <laughs> Yeah, um, so it was really, it's obviously really hot today, but your performance was still really high energy, so how did you keep that up throughout the whole thing? It all has to do with whoever's in the in the audience and then them just giving us energy, and it's, and it's kind of like a energetic volcano. Did you feed off of it almost? Yeah, the responsibility falls on you and like yeah. other and people. And people were there, people were ready to go. Yeah. Like the crowd they was, were, they, yeah, they, they were. It was really nice. We love them back. That's so good to hear. You did an acoustic set in the audience. Yeah. Was that like an impulse decision? It was. I it was very much so. Yeah, we have done that. We've just recently started doing that, but we've never done it for the last song. And we yeah. were not yeah. playing yeah. on it. We're not Austin. playing on it. Let's go out there. And it was it's just, just kind of like a, a mood thing, a vibe thing. And it was kind of like, wow. The, yeah, and it's, it's nice. It's unexpected, you know. I feel like sometimes people go to festivals and then they're, they're used to, they see the band on stage and they're kind of dancing around. But you hop off and people really freak out. Yeah. And it wasn't like we had like anything. We were just like in it. Yeah. It people like kind of forget. In it. They forget that they're at a music festival. They're just kind of like with these other humans. It's very like an intimate moment almost. Like yeah. it's very. Yeah. Like, Everyone started making out, right? Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Next I mean, time we gotta get all three of us on people's shoulders. I know. So we're just all up in the. Yeah, it was funny. He was on someone's shoulders, yeah. and then you're so nice. You kept asking him like. Are you, Are you okay? And he's like, because sing the up yeah. song, man! And I'm that like, what he said? So he's like, just sing! Just sing! Oh, like, just, he thought ever. he was like falling, but he's like trying to dance. Okay. Like, trying to dance and enjoy and You're like, Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, yeah. He's like, he's. I just thought I, I could. I wanted to make sure he was. Yeah. His, his back was okay. No, your compassion has no back. It's a very Canadian thing to do. Yeah. Like, I'm always. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Exactly. I'm like, you're Canadian. You're there. Sorry. Yeah. How does music festivals here in Canada differ from those in the United States? Like, I know you play, you played Firefly. So how is this one different? like that <clears throat> well they're both uh, this and Firefly are both in nature which is really nice yeah. um, the food here was exceptional yeah it, it was really, really good I uh, is that a Canadian thing great food yeah I love it it's us the weather here is really nice hot uh, it's, actually it's actually not, not as hot, hot as it's, we've had played some hotter festivals yeah, yeah, we, have. yeah we have this is, this is a nice Canadian yeah. breeze you guys are blessed yeah, yeah. We are. I guess it's just always like this, so this is your hot. You're like, oh. But our hot is much hotter than your hot. It's normally a lot colder than this. It's rained a lot this summer. Really? Because so. yeah. nice. this hot, your hot is like our comfortable. Yeah. But also, I feel like Canadians are a little more open, maybe. Yeah. Um, just to, to generalize, you know, like it it's just it's a little more of like a small town feel, even though it's a it's a big country. But it's just everyone's a little warmer from the get go. Yeah. If that makes sense. That's good. Here. I'm glad we're giving you that vibe. Yeah, yeah. So the atmosphere here was more relaxed, you would say almost? Not really relaxed. A little welcoming, more welcoming, yeah. more like Yeah, sometimes sometimes it takes like the second song two to like get the crowd with us and they were with us from song one. Yeah. You know, Huge difference. Great. Yeah. That's like a fifty percent. It's like, you know, two or two and a half minutes long later than they normally get way into it. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so you've also obviously played a lot of venues in Toronto, so those are obviously different from festivals. So do you prefer playing music festivals or those closed venues, or is it kind of completely different all around? Well, I mean, one of the one of the 
ways that our band even became formed was Austin and I had a, a, a previous project with a different name and we kind of played a few shows in our home city and then we got a call from a festival uh, a festival owner to play the to play our festival and he called me up and said let's get the band back together we're doing it so we put Magic Giant was kind of like formed at the behest of the festival so we'll always that's always has a place in our heart you know yeah, but the club shows are great. I mean, sometimes yeah. the club shows feel like, on this tour, some of them feels like you know, like punk rock or something. Yeah, like it's the just roof's like gonna break totally down. packed out. And we played this place in uh, in Portland, and the floor was like totally like springboarding, springboarding yeah. up and down. Yeah, all the all yeah, my violin and viola fell off the stage during yeah. the show. Yeah, my I keyboard fell. Off fell. The stage. Yeah, everything body. that was on stage wow. fell off the stage. <laughs> we actually, in the last couple of days, we almost broke two other stages too. Oh, Last yeah. night in Tennessee and in DC. And oh, in DC. Yeah. So the festivals are built sturdy, you know? <laughs> Less likely. Than yeah, yeah. Good, that's yeah. good to hear. Um, so when you're writing your songs, do you write them like on a whim or do you find them like, like do they ha always have meaning? I think they're on I a whim. I think it can be both, yeah. yeah. They don't always have meaning internally sometimes. They have like meaning you to a more a broad spectrum of thoughts or ideas, maybe not generally like an internal feeling that someone has or experience. It could be an experience yeah. felt. But I think mostly others. like good songs are written when you're not trying to write them. I think sometimes if you sit down and say, here I am going to sit down and write an amazing song that will touch the world, you're probably going to write like a bad song. Yeah. But if you just like experience and then, you know, and it's coming to you, it's coming you know? to you, little bits and pieces. We kind of work almost in vignettes where we'll have ideas for songs that uh, we'll even separately kind of come up with when we have even time apart or on the road if someone's playing guitar and then we, we become collaborative as we like bring the song to fruition like through production and stuff. So I mean we work with voice like we record little ideas all the time. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's definitely not the way I thought it happened. But How did you think it happened? I thought that you just sat down and wrote a song and then that was it. I thought that everything just all fell together all nice and neat. Yeah, no, I mean, we... Learning! I'm learning! You know, great songs are written, they're rewritten. So, it's just like, I think, any other type of art. Like, there really is a craft to it. Like, you can have the idea or the spark for the song. Yeah. And that's nice. It's a nice idea. You might have, like, a cool, like, little melody. But if the whole thing isn't a complete, like, thought, then I don't think it'll connect. So we try to at least make sure that the songs mean something to us. And if it means something to us, then, like, hopefully it'll mean something to other people. Yeah, because your personal experiences always reflect on other people too, right? It's so like what you've experienced in your life, somebody else is probably Yeah, and you know, last summer when we were playing these songs on tour, uh, some of them were unfinished. Uh, we had one song that it was actually written on the set list, Untitled, and we played it at a, a festival in California, and after we played the song, a girl came up to us and said, while you guys were playing that song, uh, I felt the presence of my friend who passed away when I was 16, and it felt like she was like with me at the festival. And we were really moved by that. So as we like continue to write throughout the summer, you know, the song became about her friend and the kind of their story. And, and her friend's name was Jade. So it's so cool because last summer on on tour we wrote this song, and then this summer we're playing it, and yeah. everyone's like way into it. And we and named it really, Jade. Yeah, and the song, the song is Jade. So in that case, it was like we were affected by, by like, her totally, story. Yeah, yeah, her story. So like your fans definitely definitely influence like what you're doing, like your Absolutely. music, everything. Yeah. Absolutely, both live and on the record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. One last question: um, What is your go-to festival drink? Oh, um, water they, I mean, is they, mine. Yeah, water. Because otherwise, I'd yeah, be dead. I mean, I, if they have a dark and stormy, I'll do that. Can't really find it at festivals that much. Yeah, if they have kombucha, I'm all over. Oh, nice. Try to steal all the kombucha. But yeah. Is, is there? there? Yeah. Great. We actually, Didn't know that. We actually played a festival recently that had coffee, kombucha. Oh, yeah. I've never heard it before, but I drank like 12. No, yeah, that was days. yummy. That was really yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's great. So that's, yeah. I'm also a uh, coconut water guy. C2O with pulp or harm, harmless harvest. They're both good. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you very much. It was thank so you. wonderful to get to meet you. Appreciate it. No problem. And good luck on the rest right. of your tour. Thank you. No problem. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you, B.